We begin Baldur's Gate 3 with the protagonist waking up inside a giant dimension crossing a lithid, mind flayer, flying ship. They are implanted with a parasitic tadpole that enthralls and transforms people into a lithids. However, the transformation does not happen, and the ship comes under attack from Gith Yankee warriors riding dragons. The protagonist is freed during the fighting and steers the damaged ship to Faerun, where it crashes. They encounter other survivors of the wreck, all likewise implanted with tadpoles. The party seeks to remove their parasites through numerous avenues, all of which fail to provide a cure. They are saved from the tadpole's overwhelming psychic force by a dream visitor inside Shadowheart's mysterious prism, a device that is sought after by the Gith Yankee. The protagonist then becomes involved in the fate of the Emerald Grove, where local druids and tiefling refugees face off against the goblin horde that worships a cult of the Absolute. Once the party either sacks or saves the grove, they travel through the mountains or the Underdark to reach Moonrise Towers, a cultist stronghold, in search of a new cure. The protagonist seeks sanctuary from the curse around Moonrise Towers in a tavern called The Last Light, held by a group of tiefling refugees, flaming fist conscripts and harpers. General Ketherick Thorne, the reigning lord of Moonrise and chosen of Merkel, is using a relic named the Night Song as an engine for his immortality. The party scours the depths of Moonrise in pursuit of the Night Song, revealed to be Dame Aelin, a daughter of Saluna. After either slaying or freeing the Night Song, the protagonist confronts Ketherick, as well as his cohorts, Orin the Red, the chosen of Baal, and Enver Gortash, the chosen of Bane. Through their nether stones and a mysterious crown, the Triumvirate collectively controls the Absolute, revealed to be an Elder Brain, the ultimate form of the Elithid race, and seeks to rule the Sword Coast by manipulating everyone implanted with a tadpole. Oren and Gortash depart with the Elder Brain for Baldur's Gate, while the protagonist defeats Ketherick and claims his nether stone. The protagonist arrives at Baldur's Gate as Gortash and Oren attempt to pit them against the other, while the companions find closure for their personal quests. It is revealed that the dream visitor is, in fact, a visage taken by a renegade elithid called the Emperor, who resides within the prism and oversees the imprisonment of a powerful Gith Yankee, Orpheus. Orpheus is the source of psionic resistance the party possesses against the Absolute, and the Emperor has been leveraging this in his favor. The protagonist eventually faces off against Gortash and Oren, assembling the Nether Stones to subdue the Elder Brain. The Elder Brain, having anticipated the Triumvirate and the protagonist's every move, overpowers the party before the Emperor comes to the rescue. Realizing that the Nether Stones require an Elithid wielder with Orpheus's powers to be effective, the protagonist either frees Orpheus and allows him to transform, which causes the Emperor to resign to his fate and join the Absolute, or has either the Emperor, a transformed Karlik, or the player character themselves consume Orpheus in order to see the mission through. After defeating the Elder Brain, the protagonist can choose to either kill it and every Elithid tadpole with it, ending the threat forever, or betray their comrades and rule as the new Absolute.